Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Dean Count Show. Today, I am hanging out with Paul Matthew, who has brought to me um, the world's first non-alcoholic aperitif. Um, yeah, to the cabin. Thanks for coming down, man. Thank I'm you very much. I'm actually really excited to taste this. <laughs> I'm quite excited to have you taste oh. it. It's um, it really is a bit of a first, as you haven't tried it yet. And yeah, <laughs> you're nervous about that. I'm nervous about that, <laughs> but I'm also I'm also slightly embarrassed that the label is a tapes up sellotape version of the label. Yeah, but I think that's the that's the best thing ever. <laughs> like you haven't even got the labels yet, and I'm getting to taste it. That's you know I love that. That's how much thing. I like you, Dean. Right. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna grab. Two. Do you want to taste as well? Oh, of course, yeah. Um, you're not driving, are you? <laughs> this is a non-alcoholic oh, aperitif. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're gonna have to get the fancy glass. No worries. Point. Wait, I can do you a small one if you like. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes. All right. Um, yeah, you pour it, man. I'm not gonna I'm not go messing with it. Until... Okay. So, what was the inspiration behind it? To start, uh, apart right. from obvious. P potentially a long story here. I'll try and cut it short. So, um, my my original career was in conservation biology. Uh, my father's a botanist. I studied conservation. I travelled around the world, um, mainly in tropical forests, doing plant conservation work. Really. Um, and bartending in my spare time, and then I was tasting all these spirits around the world, where they were being made in their natural environments. Caipirinhas in Brazil and daiquiris across the Caribbean and pisco in Chile and wines in South Africa, all that kind of stuff. And eventually I got so into that that I left conservation and opened the hide on Bermondsey Street in London. But I've always wanted to combine the, the two bits and try and bring conservation into drinks and reference, reference conservation in a product. Um, and this is kind of the culmination of that. So it's a bittersweet aperitif, um, which you can drink neat. It's designed to be drunk in a spritz, though. So I guess we'll be making a spritz it, in a minute. It's got a real lemony gentian. Is there gentian yeah. in it? Gentians. Is it Gentians gentian? definitely in there. Okay, um, nice. That's, that's one of the bittering components. And the colour comes from saffron, which also gives quite a nose and a. Um, it's a slightly slightly bitter, fragrant. Um, I'm getting the vanilla. It's, it's as quite well. a co complex note, the saffron. Very vanilla cool. in there. Um, and then you've got some, some botanicals that add texture. So, one of the things I felt was missing in a lot of non alk stuff is body and mouthfeel and texture mm. that stops you drinking it straight down like an orange squash. Yeah. Um, but it also helps carry the flavours. So, bitterness needs a bit of weight to develop in the mouth. Otherwise, it just passes over your, your taste buds and you don't really get bitterness. So, we've used um, two plants to give texture, one of which is gum arabic from the, the acacia tree from mm -hmm. Africa, yeah. which is quite common, and the other is um, something called voodoo lily, which again has a, a gummy extract that gives weight and mouthfeel and texture. Um, and that's a that's a massive flower that grows in in China. Um, we were both in China for a while, so yep. I tried to reference that. But it's um, it's a big tuber that grows underground, and then every now and again it flowers. So I don't know if you see it at Kew Gardens. Sometimes there's this giant stinky flower. It's like a version of that. It's an arum, okay. uh, an arum, and so it's the tuber from that that we've used to give give a bit more texture. Very cool. How did you how did you learn all these? Obviously, you've studied. <laughs> um, well, I've yeah, I've studied plants for. For 25 years. Um, my dad studied plants for his entire career uh, okay. and actually he wrote the definitive guide to, to crocus saffron. Um, so he's he's got a book on crocus so I wanted to use that. He's also got a, a textbook on iris so we used iris root in this as well to give a bit wow. of an earthy note to it. So did, did you get some advice from your dad on this or? Yeah I mean actually when I started making it I was digging stuff up from his garden and dehydrating it and grinding <laughs> up and <laughs> the water and, <laughs> and adding it so it's it's really been a yeah. How long has it taken to get to this stage? It's taken a year now. Okay. Um, nice. But I've been working on ideas for I don't know, probably fifteen years. Very cool. And so. you said you said it works really well in a spritz. So sh sh can I? Yeah. Make if, one? if you Is can that... make a spritz, that'd be one. You've got more of this, right? <laughs> I do have more of this. Quite limited supply at the moment. We're going to release the first hundred bottles on the first of January. Uh, um, let but me then see. more, hopefully, quite soon. Or something. Yep, yeah, that's great. Oh, Anything like that. One. 
So you find when you make a spritz, a lot of the aromas come off. Um, has quite a an interesting nose to it. So having it in a in a tapered, fluted glass is quite nice. Okay. So what do you think, though, man? I think it's delicious. I I I I don't know why, but I've got this like lemony flavour. Okay. Um, we don't have any lemon in there, like... but um, we do have okay. orange blossom, uh, okay, which, that... which gives that. Yeah, okay. The other thing we've got for citrus is uh, vetiver, which is something that's used commonly in the perfume industry. So it's actually... It's used in what? The perfume industry. Okay. So it's a relative of lemongrass. Um, the stuff we get is from Haiti. Uh, that might be... Uh, and one of the problems with making a non-alc is that alcohol is great as a solvent for oils. Yep. So if you look at all the, the non-alc gin replacements, most of them don't have much juniper in because juniper, again, is very soluble in alcohol and not very soluble at all in water. So you use other things to recreate that. For me, citrus oils, again, not very soluble in water. Mm. So we've used things that add those citrusy notes. Without so orange blossom and, and vetiver. Oils. Vetiver okay. also adds some earthiness and, and stuff like that. This is much thinner <laughs> than I'd thought. Testing your knife work. Yeah. But for me, it was important to bring that conservation element to it. Yeah, the conservation element. Does, are you are you focusing on sustainable practices and ingredients? Exactly, yeah. or? We're, we're trying to trace all the ingredients and, and where they're coming from and how they're being produced and try and source them in a way that is fairly traded, um, but also kind of relevant for the conservation of the environment around them. So, for example, the, the vanilla we're getting from communities in northern Madagascar where they're being paid a decent wage, where there's alternative livelihood income uh -huh, being so it's generated. Not just about sustainable, but and where the hopefully it's of, yeah, yeah the, the practices are growing under natural forests, so it conserves the native forest. Do you want like some lemon or citrus with this or orange would be orange. great, please. And uh, really pulls out that orange blossom. A twist or a slice or a slice. A slice? Yeah. I might change up. Wait. The vetiver again comes from Haiti no. and, and the project we're getting it from in Haiti is doing again alternative livelihoods, helping to restore communities damaged by hurricanes, um, working for to ways to to harvest it more sustainably and, and better for the, the people who are harvesting it because it's a really labour intensive thing to harvest. And having studied bioconservation you're able to use that? It, it means I know when the projects are decent and when they're oh. not. <laughs> you can call bullshit on people. Yeah, and I'm and I'm going to try and trace them myself. So I've just come back from yeah, Spain, nice. where I was trying to trace where the saffron was coming from, and for all the ingredients, I'm trying to trying to get it better. So over the course of the year, I'll... How, how much? What proportions would you suggest? Uh, one one part Everleaf and two to three parts soda. So two and a half is a good. <laughs> I'm just gonna do it by eye. <laughs> You've been doing this for long enough. Okay. Beautiful. The only soda we have in the cabin at the moment is the San Pellegrino. <laughs> so it won't have quite the bubble, but it should taste nice. I like it with a, a mineral water, actually. We'll have to look up, see how, how sustainable San Pellegrino is. <laughs> <laughs> might not be, not might not be the best. When we're trying to look at sustainability in all of it, um, we've used a lighter bottle. The the labels when they come, <laughs> we're trying to source labels that are made from paper that's made from recycled peach pulp. So is is that juice. that's why the labels haven't arrived yet? Uh, one of the reasons. Going through the uh, uh, proper due diligence. Um, so do you want to taste this first? Okay. You go for it. Yeah. I'm I'm guessing you've done this loads of times. I have. Yeah. Yeah, it's delicious. Quite it's refreshing. Really, it's really good opened up a little bit. I think, have you have you thought about, you know, doing the obvious things like a faux groany or <laughs> well, non groany yeah. or no groany or whatever it is? We're tasting it straight here and I think it's delicious straight. Um, mm. It's, it, it fit, it, I was expecting it, I was expecting you to go for a straightforward like Campari sort of flavor, but it kind of comes out a bit more like earthy, more Susie sort of. Yeah, um, I can't help but compare it to. I didn't want to copy something. It's alcoholic cousins. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it's its own thing. I, I want to make my own thing, but that references those. So if people 
understand other spritz ingredients and then know how to use it that's great but i don't want it to be a copy of something that's just a non-alcoholic something else I want it to so be... i think you and i can have a bit longer chat but i think for the people that watch the dcs we'll try to keep it as, sh as short as we can where when is this coming out officially and where can they get it we're launching on the first of january seems logical okay yep um, for, we'll for have... dry january or whatever Sorry. we'll have 100 bottles available then um, and then the second batch is hopefully coming middle of January. Um, so we should have more available from then on, which you can get through the website, everleafdrinks.com. Okay, we'll put a link to that. We'll also be, yeah, supplying retail. And and you can go try it in the hide? You can go try it in the hide or at Demon Wise and Partners. Um, you can come find me. You can drop me a line. You can contact me through Instagram or whatever, and I'll, I'll bring a bottle around to you um, within reason. <laughs> but yeah. Awesome. Thank you so really much for coming and, and, and hopefully everyone will like it as much as we have today. Amazing. I'm going to make something else with it as well. Dude. It's fucking delicious. Yep. Awesome. I'm very pleased about that.